We were conducting a demonstration in a wildland fire scenario of an autonomous helicopter and its capability to respond, obtain water, and drop on an incident with autonomous capabilities. Got invited to a scenario with the autonomous uh, helicopter with uh, Rain and Sikorsky in the Helco platform with the Southern California Quick Reaction Force. And we set up a simulated fire traffic area with a, some real fire and a real dip site. We met ahead of time with the test pilots. We gave them basically just the briefing of what a fire traffic area is. And it's a, a standard way that we use to organize fires across the United States. We realized that this was kind of a historic moment, not only in the fire service, but in aviation in general. It was the first time a autonomous helicopter was flying next to a crewed tactical helicopter um, in this kind of environment. Uh, Zero Papa Victor, uh, 76 Charlie Gulf, we're coming on scene as Helco, altimeter 2990, uh, you're cleared in uh, 4,000, Helco is at 4,500. Someone wanted to mention, hey, I think you were the first aircraft to operate uh, in a simulated fire traffic area with, uh, with the autonomous uh, helicopter, and I said, well, it didn't seem like that big a deal. <laughs> but it wasn't that big a deal because we just applied the system that we have to make things work. The Helco is still 4,500. No other aircraft, no known aircraft on scene. Hazards are uh, power lines along the road on your departure. Additional power lines uh, north of your target area. Lift at your discretion. Zero Papa Victor, happy out. Zero Papa Victor, Helco, just make your calls out of the dip and off the drop. Zero Papa Victor, out of is in autonomous mode, taking up water. And this is an autonomous water pickup. Added the dip. And ready for departure, autonomous mode. Thanks, sir. Over. Over the drop zone in three, two, one, drop. It's one thing to tell it to drop on a GPS path. It's another thing for it to actually make an adjustment and be programmed to drop on the right portion of the fire, not just hit the fire. As we know, our world is changing in real time in all ways, how we communicate, um, autonomous taxis on the streets, um, and it's coming to the air, it's coming to our industry. You look at the system out on the highways and the boulevard and there's pretty successful autonomous vehicles uh, with optical and other types of sensors that are maneuvering around on the roads with a lot of unpredictable uh, motorists and traffic. And so here we are where, you know, we can be pretty predictable in what, what we do. And that is one of the key things that makes the fire traffic area work. When us as industry professionals, if we're offered a seat in the table and we don't hop in, then um, we can't be a part of where it goes. So I think it's a great opportunity for those of us that have the background to be a part and answer the question and make sure that those, those great ideas and that energy is being focused in the right direction that allows us to keep small fires small.